the day has finally come for remote rates to have a change and it's something that a lot of people maybe did not expect but I personally already knew that a change in the remote rate would come eventually one day. A lot of you guys were asking me to make a video to talk about my opinion on this matter and you have been asking me for the last few days in my comment section in the last videos on Twitter about my opinion about this. Well, there are a lot of things that I would like to say, really a lot of things and some of the things you guys may not like to hear from me also. But first of all, hi hi to all of you guys. So for the last six days, it has been a really, really, you know, um, not a good time for Princess and I. What I mean by that is, we both love Pokemon Go. We love playing Pokemon Go and to see an announcement by Niantic to have affected the community so greatly, it pains us to see all this. I, for one, have experienced and seen something like this happen many times and in fact, back in the year 2021 that it has happened. But for Princess herself, she has never experienced something like this. She was actually very worried for the last six days and she told me every night that she's very worried about what's going to happen for the future of Pokemon Go, including the channel. Last night was the worst of all because she could not uh, sleep well and she told me she couldn't sleep at all even up to 2, 3, 4 a.m. she was still rolling on the bed and we were just talking and she was pouring her hearts out to me. Today we were supposed to go for a trip to the zoo. We are here in Taipei, Taiwan for our so-called vacation. We were supposed to go to the zoo today, but eventually she said that she was not, uh, you know, um, mentally, you know, um, I guess good enough to want to go for the trip. And I understood that. She kind of knows what I'm going to talk about on the video. And like I said, it's something that some of you guys may not want to hear. But I came to my conclusion on the decision that Niantic has made through a lot and a lot of extensive reading and understanding of the community, watching countless of videos from the other YouTubers like Pokedexy, Trainer Club, Zoe Two Dots, Trainer Techniques, Mystic Seven and all the others. I've watched every single YouTuber's video. Hence why I took six days to make this video to talk to you guys. Of course, within these six days, a lot of things went down on Twitter, including, you know, GoHub writing an article about their feelings from the individual writers, and I've read everything about it, including the VP of the Niantic company writing, he giving his own opinion about the whole situation. I've read everything, alright? In fact, I've read everything from my group chats, everything, but they're just... A lot of things to absorb and a lot of things to talk to you guys about that it's not easy to talk to you guys and it's something that will definitely affect the way I play Pokemon Go likewise for you guys in the future so first things first there are a lot of comments out there saying that you know um, Niantic should not implement this change well I agree to an extent but also not completely what I mean by that, well, hear me out, alright? If you guys want Niantic to hear you guys, hear me out also, alright? Before you guys start closing the video and not wanting to listen to whatever I would like to say. Another thing though, is that people, you know, were commenting saying that I didn't want to make a video to talk about this because I paid my Niantic to shut my mouth or whatsoever. Well, first things first, I've actually set this video on no monetization, okay? for the sake of you guys listening to me and not getting interrupted at all and to prove to you guys that money is not everything for me. Second of all, I am not being bought by Niantic. I am not sponsored by Niantic. Niantic has never given me a single cent in terms of monetary and non-monetary benefit. 
I, for one, will never ever work with Niantic, and that is something that all of my friends would know. Even if Niantic were to offer me thousands or millions of dollars, there's something that they can never, never buy away from me, and that is my freedom. My freedom of speech, that is something that I don't wish to sell to Niantic. To put it on record though, well, for the last few days after looking at how Niantic deals with stuff, in fact for the last few months and years, I'll just say this, Niantic is shit. Yeah, Niantic is really shit in terms of communicating with us as a community. They said that they were supposed to give us, you know, development or developer monthly articles. Well, that happened for the first few months after they said that after Hiraj Niantic in the year 2021. Well, they showed us how they actually did, um, you know, some write-ups about PvP. They did some write-ups about how they, you know, decide for the season. They even do did some write-ups about the community days. I read every single one of them. I like them. Especially the one about the po uh, Pokemon Go community day. However, there wasn't a follow-up anymore. When was the last time you actually got a developer article? I'm not sure. Well, that aside though, continuing from what Goha actually said, the second point is that they don't listen to the so-called appointed community leaders. I wouldn't give names though, but on Twitter, I know who they are. I know who you guys are, as in the so-called community leaders appointed by Niantic, but you guys even voiced out and say that you guys ain't heard by Niantic itself. It's pretty sad for me to, you know, know that. It's really, really sad. So... For that part, like I said, I would say Niantic sucks. Niantic is shit. And I say that really, really strictly and firmly. And if Niantic want to come after me for whatever I'm saying in terms of thinking that I'm trying to do some defamation over here, go ahead. But all in all, although Niantic has been poor on those sides, they have been trying for the last few months. You know, of course, trying and doing is another thing. Example, if we take a look at last month's at Elite Raids, Reggie Draco. There were some problems in the time zones, the earlier time zones, GMT plus 13, GMT plus 12, in Australia and New Zealand. Of course, I know about all those. But the thing is, there was supposed to be a makeup. Was there any makeup? Not to my knowledge. Was there any compensation? Not to my knowledge. People did not even get back their passes that they used and they could not even catch the Reggie Draco at all. Now, they have made an announcement for Reggie Elderkey on the 9th of April. Whoa! Wait a second. Isn't 9th of April Easter holiday for America? Hence, a lot of people are very, very angry about the date being set on the 9th of April. But that being said, that has been told to us at least a month ago during the start of the season of Heroes. But the problem is, Niantic could have planned on another date. That was something that came to my mind, but you know, Community Day is coming up the following weekend, and then Community Day Classic will be on the very last weekend of the month, and I believe on the third weekend of the month, this month in the month of April, there might be something also. So hence why they could not plan the Elite Rates on either of all those weekend dates. Of course, they could always do it in a way that they hold the Elite Rates the next day after a community day, which means people will play community day and the next day have to play elite rates again, which could be really, really stressful. But all in all, you know, for me, I don't need to go through whatever details about the remote rate system that has been changed, the price increase, and in fact, the limitations. It would affect everybody who does remote rates. Of course, if you do not do rates at all, like our friend Eli from Michigan, who was recently on my video, it would not affect him to a very direct extent. But his friends who plays the game, who actually enjoys playing the game, will eventually drop out from the game and not want to play the game anymore. That would indirectly affect him. For me, definitely, I will be affected too. Likewise for every one of you guys. Alright? And after reading the hashtag Heroes and Iantic letter, I do agree also disagree with some points. I know a lot of you guys would be saying, you know, Brendan, he's 
sold out the ninth day, I'm snitching and you know whatever. I say everything from the bottom of my heart, from how I view everything as an overall uh, macro perspective and not just a singular micro perspective. So that's something you guys have to understand from me. I've played this game since the game first came out. Yes, I'm very sure many of you guys can share the same sentiment as me. However, I dare say that I have gone around to speak to many, many community leaders and met up with many more people than many of you guys. I'm not saying this to boast or anything, but the truth of the matter is I understand the community more than a lot of, more, a lot of other people out there, including the other content creators combined. I know you guys would say that it's kind of ironic for me to say this, but there are people who are affected by the remote rates being set as how it is for the last three years. But of course, there are people who are affected positively also, that I understand. Of course, in the hashtag here as Niantic letter, it was stated there were people who are disabled, people who are single parents having to take care of their children, having to work night shift, unable to join raids during the day, who are greatly affected, people who are living in rural areas, not having to have access to so many gyms, are affected positively by the inclusion of the remote rates. However, it was stated when remote rates first came out back in the year 2020 that it was going to be a temporary thing. Let me emphasize again, it's a temporary thing. It wasn't going to be a permanent thing. So to give props to Niantic for making it a permanent thing, well, it's something that we should actually accept that they have done something in a way good. That is a permanent thing and we can still do remote rates. Of course, the limitations being five per day angers a lot of people. All right. Increasing the price from a single 100 Pokecoins to 170 Pokecoins per bundle, per, per, per pass, all right, of course, anger a lot of people too. Of course, it is to encourage people to go out to do in-person raids with the premium battle passes instead of doing the remote raids, and I truly understand why. Niantic, one of the core value is to explore. Exploration is one of the core value that they actually want people to do. However, it's not in everybody's mindset that exploration or playing the game to the way that Niantic wants them to play is something that people would like to go about with. Everybody have their own daily life and priorities to go after. Remember, Pokemon Go is still a game after all. And if you have other more important things to do in life, a game should not take precedence over the other more important stuff. And also, as said, Pokemon Go is a game, as even mentioned back in the year 2018 on Trainer Tips video. I did say that Pokemon Go is a game and a game for you to enjoy. If you're not enjoying a game, something is clearly, clearly wrong. And that is when you have to assess what you are doing and whether you would like to continue with this. So even for me, I truly do enjoy playing Pokemon Go, making content, making videos for you guys to watch, showing you guys how I travel to play Pokemon Go in various countries, going around with different communities to play Pokemon Go with other people, giving them the experience that you know a lot of people may not experience at all because I can't travel to every single country to play Pokemon Go with every single trainer out there, though I would love to go and play with every community out there. But it's something that um, I really love doing for the last seven years. Of course, not everyone can speak the way I speak because not everyone live Pokemon Go as their life. That I totally understand. Not everyone makes money from playing Pokemon Go, making YouTube content. That I totally understand. Most people would have a normal nine to five job and hence most people wouldn't have the amount of time that I can spend on the game. That I totally understand too. But the reason why I'm kind of, in a way, on a fence on this decision made by Niantic. First of all, it's something that we as players, I as players, as you guys, cannot control. Of course, we can go around and make a petition on change.org. We can go around and go on social media and blast whatever hashtag here as Niantic. Question is, would they listen? Would it work? Would the change still happen? Well, 
these are things that we ensure. But all in all, all I can say is that for me, I have gone to many communities and during the time that I have been there before the pandemic and after the pandemic, things has changed a lot. Especially to places that I've been to before the pandemic and even after the pandemic. A lot of the community leaders have told me that it's because of people not wanting to come out despite the fact that lockdowns have been removed from their country. People still just remote raid. I hear it many times from community leaders around the world, especially the last 11 months where I've been traveling and I've been to more than 30 communities around the world. Of course, I would like to go to America and Europe and to other communities around the world too, but that will be another trip for another time. But the community leaders will tell me that they find it really difficult to get people out there, especially during raid hours. When they would call people to come out, people would just reply them and say, hey, you just send me the invite and I'll just join you from my home or whatsoever. It's quite saddening to hear that, especially hearing from the community leaders that there used to be 20, 30 people who would go around and do raids together and eventually it dropped down to just two people or three people going around together, sending invites to like 10 or 15 people and the rest just join in remotely. Of course, you guys can tell me, say that things have changed, the game has changed, the pandemic has changed and the game has evolved. Totally agree. I totally agree. But... Remote raid is a double-edged sword. It is good. It is efficient. It helps us to do raids conveniently. I myself use it very often, especially for making content for you guys to see. Easier for me also. I don't have to run to the raid all the time. I don't have to stress so much in terms of looking and waiting for the egg to hatch where I can just receive uh, raid invites from my friends to complete the 20 raids or whatever raid count I like to do to complete for the video. However, um, in the long run, it will affect us. You can say positively or negatively, it depends on how you view it. But Niantic and the Pokemon company definitely views it as negatively because a lot of more people in exploring and going out there. Of course, a lot of you guys will give me the argument also that Niantic want people to go out there to collect your data. They want to collect your data so that they can sell your data and they can make your money off your data. Well, that's another topic to talk about next time, but the truth of the matter is if Niantic and Pokemon Company are genuine to the extent that they want people out there to explore and play Pokemon Go the way it should be, well, then um, I understand where they're coming from. But of course, if they have other malicious thinking, like wanting to get our data, then of course, something is clearly wrong. Of course, playing the game that conveniently, people just became so used to it, and it became just a habit for a lot of people, myself included, all right, myself included, that it just became so convenient to just remote, 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 and not wanting to go out and play the game. There were times, you know, like my friends would say, hey, let's remote that gym over there when it's just a three minutes or four minutes walk. And it's not a very far walk or difficult walk. And I will question them, why don't we just walk to the gym and why must we remote? It's just a three or four minutes walk. And it's not as if we have something to do that we are busy or we can't afford to go to the raid and not as if it's raining or the weather is bad and we can't go to the raid. When I hear stuff like that, it makes me feel as if, yo, we could literally walk there and eventually when I encourage them to walk there, yeah, we did, we walked there. And eventually when someone gets a rare candy XL or something like a poffin, they get a bit more excited than doing the remote. Of course, some of them would like to clear their free passes also and going there to do the raid in person will allow some of them to clear their free pass instead of spending money to do another remote raid pass. So... The, there, there has been a lot of, you know, uh, division among the community, especially with this change in the remote rate system that will be implemented soon. And I understand a lot of you guys wouldn't agree with me. A lot of you guys might even, you know, unsubscribe from the channel. But ultimately, I will say this, that is your choice. And even for you guys to continue to play Pokemon Go, well, Princess did ask me to talk a bit about mental health and I do feel that this is probably the best time to talk about it. She and I have been mentally affected by this entire whole ordeal. No lie about that. 
you guys think that on camera we look really really good really really awesome really really happy but at the back especially when we are back to the accommodation we think about it a lot we really think about it a lot and to see a lot of people struggle you know with the change and mentally get affected by it is something that i really really do not want to see of course it's something that we have enjoyed for the last three years and if you don't wish to accept this change you always have the choice the only person who is stopping you from stopping you know whatever you're doing is yourself if i for one do not like to play pokemon go anymore for whatever reason i definitely will just quit the game all right i'm not asking you guys to quit the game because it is your choice but i'm just telling you guys that you guys have the choice to do that with me saying this it proves that I am not sponsored by Niantic. I do not work for Niantic. Niantic or Pokemon Company would never want their players to quit. Unless in a situation like that. That they are trying to make a drastic change. Which they are gambling for the future, for the better. For the longevity of the game. Trust me on this. I am even unsure about how it will go with the decision that has been made by Niantic and the Pokemon company to make a change in the remote rate system. I've seen a lot of my friends, people whom I know, I do not want to give any names, but they are the ones who are against the idea. And I do feel them, how they would actually be affected by the game, especially by my friends whom do not have a strong local community within their group, they will be affected. But I also can say that if you are remoting around your local community, there might be some people out there who are playing the game alone and they may not know that there are players like yourself who are also playing the game. If you remote into the gym and someone else is actually at the gym itself you could have actually gone there to do the raid in person and make friend with that person of course the argument to me is that not everyone would like to make friends with a stranger of course some people have severe anxiety issues and hence do not want to talk to anyone at all that i totally understand but my point is there would be an opportunity for two parties to meet and communicate had remote raiding did not happen at all but of course the limitation being set at five per day could increase in the future i was hoping that something better could have been implemented and hence i feel that the decision that was made by niantic to limit it at, at five is kind of dumb in a sense that during raid hour days it will greatly affect a lot, a lot of players. So I just do hope that during raid hour days, it will actually be increased, especially every Wednesday or even every weekend when it's raid days, it will increase. By how much, we do not know. But all in all, with the current um, struggles right now that a lot of people are facing, since a lot of prices are going up, Increasing the price of the remote rate passes is something that a lot of people are very unhappy about. But it's something that Niantic has chosen to do. And remember, like I said, you have a choice whether you want to continue to play the game. Especially if Niantic were to increase the price to 200 coins per pass, 300 coins per pass, 500 coins per pass, 1000 coins per pass. You have the choice to make if you would like to buy the remote raid pass or not. I have not been remote raiding a lot. The only times when I remote raid is when I truly make content. Princess and I will only use our local pass for most of the parts. As I told her, since most of the raid bosses are around for quite a number of days, we can actually use our local passes. Of course, we have the benefit of 
having a lot of gyms around us, especially at where we are at right now. And I understand that a lot of people out there who are living in rural areas who, when they go into the gym at all, there ain't anybody in the red lobby at all. And they have to invite their friends, either that or they have to create multiple accounts and build those accounts up to a strong account to be able to take down the red boss by themselves using multiple devices. That I totally understand. However, there have been a few suggestions that have been made and I think should hear that, especially for rural players living in rural areas, how it can improve the way they play the game. Unfortunately, none of this has been implemented. Example, like me saying that they could decrease the difficulty of the tier 5 rate boss at places that do not have as many gyms as somewhere that has a lot more gyms. That would indicate that the place is pretty rural and would mean that having a soloable rate boss, tier 5 rate boss, will allow a rural player or two players to take down the rate boss much easily. Of course, the rewards could be changed, but that being said, if you are already living in a rural area, I don't think it's fair to reduce the reward but still maintain it as how you would receive if you are at another place. A lot of suggestions can be made, a lot of ideas can come up, but the question is would Niantic implement all this? We are unsure about it. I know, like I said, a lot of people may not like what I'm, I've am i said so far, but everything that I said is literally from the very bottom of my heart. I really love this game a lot, I love this community a lot, and hence why I'm here, I care for you guys, and I care for you guys to the extent that even if you guys do not want to play the game anymore, and if you guys find it too stressful to play the game, I really urge you guys to take a break from the game, alright, whether it's a temporary break, or whether it's a permanent break, I really really recommend you guys to do that, because I do not want you guys to be so stressed up, so mentally affected, that it just becomes so unenjoyable to play the game, or even look at the app. If you guys decide to remove the app from your devices, that's your choice. And also, ultimately, if that helps you, that's great. You know, I, for one, would not force someone to continue to play Pokemon Go if they do not enjoy playing the game anymore. Just like my two friends from Denmark, Dabrin and Magron, the two 3 billion XP brothers, I've never ever messaged them and told them, hey, why did you quit Pokemon Go? You know, a lot of people look up to you guys and you guys should not quit Pokemon Go. You guys should continue to play. But clearly, if they do, they will really, really hate the game even more and they have a bigger resentment towards the game. Even towards me, maybe. Likewise, I would really, really um, appreciate the respect that you guys would be able to offer to anybody who have decided to wash their hands off the game to not, like tease them or say anything about it. Ultimately, everybody has their own individual choice to make. Likewise, for myself, if I decide to wash my hands off the game, I don't wish for anybody, including my friends, including Auntie Gladys and Anne, to come up to me and say, hey, can you please continue playing the game? We need you to, you know, without you, we can't. Um, but I really have no interest to play the game anymore. I wouldn't continue. So, of course, it's not an easy topic to talk about. A lot of you guys would want the remote rates to stay. I, for one, would feel that if it stays, it stays. If it does not stay and it gets limited, um, I'm also cool with it. Liter I'm really, really cool with either um, paths. Because I know both has its advantages and also its disadvantages. And to see Niantic willing in fact, even the Pokemon company willing to make this choice to jeopardize their revenue and in a way jeopardize their reputation. It's pretty commendable in a sense that in the last few years when a lot of people were shitting on Niantic saying that Niantic is just a money grabber, Ni Ni Niantic just wants to make, um, make money out of us and whatsoever. Truth being said, if they really wanted to make money out of us, they could have gradually increased the price of remote rates and see where would be the sweet point of reaching the limit to get the most amount of maximum revenue they could possibly milk out from this remote rate pass. Instead, they decided to set a limit to it, just 5 per day, resulting in a lot of the top players, a lot of the wheel spenders, not be able to do more than 5 per day. Even if you you spend um, the maximum number of remote rates per day, they will earn roughly eight hundred and seventy 
or 60 Poké coins instead of the usual, say, if you do um, 50 raids a day, there'll be 5,000. I used to spend more than, you know, like 80, uh, not 80, 8 to 10,000 Poké coins per day just on remote raids alone. With this limit, I wouldn't be able to come close to that. But of course, for the last few months, I've not been spending a lot on remote raids. I would dare say I spend more on in-person rate passes than remote rate passes by at least six or seven folds. But of course everybody plays the game differently and I understand. But ultimately I'll just end off by saying that whatever change that happens, I just hope that for those of you who decide to leave the game, I wish you guys all the best in whatever you guys do. For those of you who still decide to continue to play the game, I wish you guys all the best also and continue to enjoy playing the game. I, for one, will continue to make content on Pokemon Go because that's something that I will not stop doing for now even with this change being implemented. Moving forward though, if this gets implemented, which I believe it will because Niantic seems pretty pretty firm on this already and hence why um, I don't really bother to try and uh, say anything. Although, yeah, a lot of people say, why, why didn't I try? But I've already given you guys my uh, thoughts in terms of why I don't I'm kind of on the fence on, on this but um, n a lot of things will change all right and Niantic wanting to encourage in-person uh, gameplay we will see how things would change over the next few months and whether it will change for the better when uh, certain things happen that is all from me and uh, it's not an easy or a video that I really would like to make and I just want to enjoy playing Pokemon Go showing you guys how you know Pokemon Go can be played but to see many of you guys being so angry with the situation I am also affected by it but I do hope something positive can come out of this eventually hopefully Although the chance of that happening is pretty slim from what I'm seeing. Ultimately, like I said, I am just a player like you guys. I've already voiced out my opinion. And last but not least, I'll just like to say one more time, I am not sponsored by Niantic, so I can say whatever the I want. Alright? And if Niantic... You ain't gonna make any positive changes with this current limitation to the remote rates. I'm talking about your brilliant ideas that you have for the next few months to hype people up for your game. I will seriously, you up. Okay. That's not a threat, but I'm just saying. Yeah. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode, in the next video. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.